Philip City volunteers in Singapore prepared to assist with relief distributions in Pahang, Malaysia. City volunteers organized a large-scale distribution in the community of Shadda in Capetian, Haiti. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Helen L. Thank you for joining us. According to the Malaysian government, some 160,000 residents in the country are currently homeless due to the flooding caused by heavy seasonal rainfall since mid-December. To help, 400 volunteers from the city Kuala Lumpur and Salongo chapter immediately mobilized to hand out relief items and consolation cash to those affected. Before sunrise, a plane lands at the Sultan Ismail Petra Airport in Kota Baru, Kelantan. Getting off the aircraft are 72 city volunteers who are traveling to the flood-stricken areas in Kelantan with relief items. As many areas are still inundated by flood waters, the volunteers drive with extra caution. Knowing that many residents are in need of help, despite the long hours of travel, the volunteers are doing their best to carry out their mission. As soon as the volunteers arrived at the temporary shelter, they quickly split into teams to tend to different tasks, such as unloading relief supplies, making a list of flood victims, and much more. To ease anxious hearts, city volunteers not only offer words of encouragement but also warm hugs. I didn't bring my wallet with me. Right now, I only have this with me, which is my ID card and other important documents. Assistance, those staying at the temporary shelter can finally put their hearts at ease because they know that they are not alone. Besides visiting flood victims in Kelantan, city volunteers also travel to Lingtan and Laksa, two of the worst hit villages in Sungai Siput. After going through the recipient list with the local police, city volunteers next handed out consolation cash to locals. Another area affected by the flooding is Kuala Lipis in Pahang. Uh, the weather is changing constantly. I just heard that Timolo is once again flooded. The flood waters in Kuala Lipis are slowly receding. I think this trip will be very challenging for our volunteers. While conducting their relief mission, the volunteers have came across many relentless hearts. This is a test, so we need to be strong. We need to overcome all challenges and remain tough throughout this difficult time. I feel that Sisi Foundation has the power to help me regain my sense of courage. With city volunteers by their side, flood survivors in Malaysia have regained their courage to work to overcome the challenges brought by this disaster. Upon learning of the severity of the flood along the east coast of Malaysia, 40 city volunteers in Singapore quickly mobilized to offer their assistance. However, no charter bus companies were willing to rent a bus to the volunteers due to severity of the disaster. Thankfully, through the assistance of an entrepreneur, the volunteers finally found a bus that would take them to the disaster-stricken areas in Kuantan, Pahang. We need to talk to the director right now because we can't find any buses in Singapore. We have to call to see if the volunteers will need to make a bus transfer at Johor Bahru. Pahang in Malaysia was severely devastated by the recent flooding. Therefore, no charter bus companies in Singapore were willing to run their buses to the volunteers. Furthermore, as the highway connecting Singapore and Kuantan Pahang is currently closed, the volunteers will have to travel longer distances to get to the hard-hit area. 
areas. When all the charter bus companies heard that we needed to rent a bus to drive to the east coast of Malaysia, all of them rejected us. They were worried that their buses wouldn't be able to make it back to Singapore. Thankfully, Brother Xi Zhou's friend rented a bus for us. We have to get into the disaster area to understand the current situation there and figure out how we'll conduct our relief missions. Upon learning of the severity of the flood in Malaysia, in just 12 hours, 40 city volunteers in Singapore volunteer to assist with the distribution in Kuantan Pahang. I want to seize the chance to contribute my share, so I sent a text message to my boss in Norway saying that I need to take a day off. I took a day off from work because I really want to help those in greater need. Besides traveling to Malaysia to assist with the relief distributions, city volunteers in Singapore also plan to canvas donations to provide further help for the flight survivors. At the time of our program's airing, the search for the missing Air Asia Flight 8501 continues, and so does the love and care on behalf of family members and friends of those on board the plane by city volunteers. At Juandat Airport, city volunteers from Surabaya have gathered to lend a shoulder of support to anyone who needs it. Meanwhile, home visitations of family members of those on board have also begun. In the wake of the missing Air Asia flight QZ8501, city volunteers in Indonesia's Surabaya continue their mission to comfort family members, waiting for news at the Juanda airport. In the morning, a few volunteers went to the airport to offer their assistance to the family members. Together, we then waited for the airline's updated report. After the information was given, we prayed. Then we handed out snacks and water to the press. Concerned about the well-being of the family members of those on board, Indonesia Vice President Yosef Kala visited the airport Monday afternoon. City volunteers have been in communication with the mayor of Surabaya to attain a name list of families that need extra love and care. There were entire families on board, and perhaps only one person remained at home. These are the cases given to our volunteers. We are also waiting for volunteers from Jakarta to get here. Basically, we will have two groups. One will continue to be posted at the airport, and the other will start home visitations. Though Indonesia is currently still on holiday, city volunteers in Surabaya and Jakarta are not paying that any mind, as they work to comfort the chaotic hearts of those waiting for news at the airport. Meanwhile, in Singapore, local volunteers have also mobilized to see how they can help upon hearing of the missing plane. On this day, they are working hand-in-hand -hand with Indonesian volunteers. Air Asia said in manifest there's a two-year-old child whose nationality is Singaporean. Although Surabaya will be at the crisis center, we thought maybe here in Singapore we can be of assistance as well. We will continue to keep in contact with Siji Surabaya to see how we can help. In the face of such difficulties, city volunteers hope their love and care will give the family members of those affected strength to face this difficult time. A tragedy occurred in Tainan, Taiwan. A 60-year-old man decided to strangle his 84-year-old mother, who was left in his care after watching her die a slow death from cancer over the past three years. He then tried to commit suicide by overdose. Sadly, such a tragedy is not uncommon in Taiwan, as the country's rapid aging population means elderly caring for the elderly is becoming more and more common. We now look into the problem and see how such tragedies can be avoided. In Tainan, Taiwan, the 60-year-old man has turned himself in after strangling his 84-year-old mother and is now being treated for trying to commit suicide by overdose. Sadly, such a tragedy is not uncommon. Among the cases of elderly in need that come through our office, quite a few are the old looking after the old. In fact, more than half of the cases are like that. But to the government, the applications are simply applications. Take the 75-year-old senior, for example. His mom is already 98 years old and has been depending on him for everything for the past seven years. We stay indoors 24 hours a day. I have a small bed set up right next to hers, and at least every couple of hours, I will have to help her up so she can go use the toilet. 
In just two to three years, the median age of Taiwan will be 80 years old, making the country into an aging developing nation. Though life expectancy has increased, a better quality of life is not guaranteed. Something must be done to prevent such tragedies from reoccurring. Seventy-eight-year-old Miss Young suffers from dementia and high blood pressure. She visits the hospital at least once a month and relies on her 60-year-old son, daughter-in-law and a foreign caretaker for her daily needs. However, the family's mood wasn't this cheerful just a month ago. Because she is aging, she sometimes will say, I don't want to live anymore, and other negative things. The pressure of a senior caring for another disabled senior can be tremendous. Thus, caretakers need to learn to take a break by utilizing the government's respite care services. Any family with a senior over 65 years old who is disabled can apply for such service through their local long-term care management center. A caseworker will assess the situation and provide a long-term care solution. Perhaps caregivers might worry about leaving the job in a stranger's hand, as they might feel they can do it better. However, they must learn to let go. If they don't learn to take a break, perhaps their health might break down quicker than the one they are looking after. <laughs> Experts recommend that family members should learn to share the workload of caring for their disabled loved one and must learn to pace themselves. Seek professional help if necessary so that tragedy can be averted. In response to a flood in early November in Capetian, Haiti, Tzu volunteers carried out a large-scale distribution in Shadad, a community severely affected by the flood. Volunteers prepared 8,100 portions of rice, bread beans, maize meal, as well as cooking oil to help local residents. Let's take a look. After nearly nine hours, 8,100 bags of relief items are finally offloaded at 4 a.m. However, as the 100 Capetian residents assisting with the offload had conflicting opinions of when they would receive their aid, Tiji volunteers decided that they could get their relief items first. While queuing in line, some people grew impatient, cut in line and took the relief items themselves. Seeing this, others who were afraid they would be left without any supplies surged forward as well. Fortunately, Capetian Mayor Ivan Altian, who has been accompanying Tiji volunteers throughout the night, had the scene brought under control. Haitian people are very passionate, just sometimes a little impulsive. By then, large crowds had already gathered outside the soccer stadium. Hence, Tiji volunteers Martin Ge and George Dung decided to carry out the distribution at 4.30 a.m. By 6 a.m., heavily armed police were stationed outside the stadium to maintain security and order. It is my honor to come here today and offer my assistance. We have been waiting for this food distribution for a very long time now. We had almost given up hope. Some of us don't even have money for food. By 7 a.m., local residents flocked to the distribution venue. For everyone, the 25-kilogram bag of rice, the 10 kilograms of red beans, maize meal and one litre of cooking oil seemed a little too heavy to carry. But they knew they had to come up with a way to take the food home, no matter what. By 8 a.m., Shada community leader Ms. Boa donned a volunteer vest to help out at the distribution. This is the first time that such a large-scale distribution is being held in our community. Before, we were isolated and never received any outside assistance. I will pray for Tsuji. Uh, 
。那我们希望能够带给这边有一份希望。For 15 hours, volunteers continued without any rest, all in the hopes of extending their blessings to the Haitian people, and that this food may relieve them of hunger and starvation. Following today's cash flow were initiative in Cap Haitian's Blue Hills, today volunteers carried out a large-scale food distribution at the local soccer stadium. At the five container truck carrying the relief goods were unable to enter the stadium. Volunteers and local residents began unloading the containers from 6 p.m. the day before. Working through the night, by 4 a.m. the next following day, 8,100 relief items have been successfully offloaded. Following the initial flood assessments in mid-November, after a month of further evaluation and planning, city volunteers from the United States decided to hold a food distribution at a local soccer stadium in Cap Haitian. As the five 40-foot container trucks were unable to enter the stadium, volunteers decided to offload all the relief items first in preparation for the distribution the following day. <laughs> The initial plan was to leave the relief supplies in the containers for safety reasons. But I'm here personally to make sure that everything's going well. With the help of Cap Haitian Mayor Yvonne Altion, close to 100 local residents were mobilized to assist the volunteers. As these residents are also in dire need of food, volunteers decided to set aside some rice, maize meal, red beans and cooking oil for them as well. If we can get this kind of ed, it will help us a lot because the food is really needed. It's really needed. Yeah, the people are hungry and we need work. And this little help right here can like open up a big door for the Haitian population. When they found out they will also be receiving a portion of the food, they were overjoyed. They told us their children can finally enjoy Christmas, and their wives will be very happy, as this aid can last them an entire month. Isn't that great? It's uh, almost 12.30. It's almost 1 a.m. It's only 1.30 now. We hope to offload everything before 4 a.m. Next, we meet two people whose lives have changed since meeting Tzidi. One is from the Xinzhu area and before becoming a Tzidi volunteer had no patience for his children. However, he now happily attends Tzidi's parent-child class with his son. Another is recycling volunteer Liao Lixiang, who felt she was saved by Master Zheng Yan from the shadows of despair. Here's more. Liao Li Xiang is not shy about sorting recyclables. When residents come to the recycling station with their items, she will teach them the right way to handle their recyclables at home. This can be recycled too, because we want to save the planet. Recyclables like this should be rinsed at home, then brought over to the recycling station. Leaving the recycling station, Liao doesn't forget to promote Ziji's message to passers-by. Master Zheng Yin says purification begins at the source. This is why the recyclables at home should be rinsed clean before they reach the recycling station. Living in sickness and despair three years ago, it was through the guidance of Ziji volunteers that Liao started doing recycling. Now, sorting recyclables has become her main focus in life. Here, other city volunteers will share their thoughts and stories with us. I enjoy that. I look forward to my two recycling days. Regaining her health and happiness, Liao also began to join the morning volunteers' assembly to listen to Master Zhen Yan's teachings. She never imagined that through such participation, her family life would take a turn for the better as well. My family life has changed. We're more harmonious because we have taken to heart the Master's teachings. I've learned so much. I'm very grateful that I can walk the Bodhisattva path. Seeing the results firsthand, Liao deeply understands that in order to influence others, change has to begin with oneself. <laughs> Thank you.
Happily attending a Cixi parent and child class is something Lin Zhenyu would never have done in the past. Sometimes when I see my children make a fuss, I'd yell at them. I wouldn't hit them, but I would yell loudly and sternly reprimand them. This was something my wife couldn't accept. This change in Lin Zhenyu actually came about from watching Dai TV programming, listening and taking to heart the Buddhist teachings. Lin now uses these Dharma lessons to raise his own children. The Master is talking about you. Isn't that time you make a change? We give them time to change themselves and grow on their own. Realizing Dharma in everyday life, Lin Zhenyu has unlocked not only his heart, but also closed the distance between himself and his family. For the volunteers living in the Wenshan and Xingdian districts of Taipei, year and blessing ceremonies in past years were held on the grounds of the nearby Taipei City Hospital. However, with the recent completion of the Xingdian Jingsi Hall, the ceremony will for the first time be held on the new Jingsi grounds. 70-year-old Li Su Zhen currently suffers from two types of cancer, but you would never know it from how she throws herself into her job here at Xindian's New Jingsi Hall. I have already been operated on from my cancers. For those with the ability to do so, they should hurry up and give. To miss this chance would be unfortunate. Working alongside Li today is her Vietnamese caretaker nurse, who also shares in the joy of the work. The year-end blessing ceremony is fast approaching, so we have come here to offer a bit of our time. Whether it is sweeping or organizing, it feels good to be here. This year, volunteers from Taipei's Xindian and Wenshan districts will have their year-end blessing ceremony at the newly opened Xindian Jingsi Hall. Ahead of the ceremony, volunteers work to ensure everything is sparkling clean. We are building the Jingsi Hall as a place where the Dharma can be practiced and we are here to clean our training ground. What is important is that those coming here in the future can find purity. Some volunteers even took a day off from work to come help with the cleaning. This is our home so it is our responsibility to keep it clean. And when visitors come, the surroundings should leave them in a good mood. Today I took a half day of work to help. This is like cleaning our home, and we have to leave it in a way that leaves our visitors feeling comfortable and happy. So we media volunteers and other volunteers are here today to clean our home. Two hundred hearts with one goal. In less than three hours, the volunteers have the Jingsi Hall looking spotless and ready to open its doors to the public. We go to Southern California, the United States, at the end of the show, where the Tzadi El Monte Liaison Office organized an event for more than a hundred newly certified Tzadi volunteers. During the event, Tzadi volunteer Lai Weiru said, walking the Bodhisattva path is the best way to repay her mother's grace. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Die Headlines. Goodbye.